the FBI, and the mysterious death of God's banker? Now, whoa, what in the world? When an FBI file opens with a paragraph that describes the case, a most complex case involving foreign intrigue, murder, and the highest echelons of the Vatican, then you know you have something interesting. That was just how the file for Banco Ambrosiano began. For information of Bureau and WFO, instant matter involves the Italian investigation of the failure of Italy's largest bank, Banco Ambrosiano, of Milan, Italy. This is a most important case in Italy and of interest to the Bureau as it involves several Bureau subjects. In a most complex case involving foreign intrigue, murder, and the highest echelons of the Vatican, the case broke wide open. Uh, I'm going to try and read that year. I think it's 19... I can't read it. I'm sorry. When the, when the president of Banco Ambrosiano, Roberto Calvi... Oh, wait, maybe I can read it now. Eight, 1983, maybe? Uh, was found hanging by the neck beneath the Blackfriars Bridge in London. While the release consisted of only a single two-page document, it was confirmation that the Bureau's interest in the case had existed. Other FOIA, or Freedom of Information Act, requests on the case had already been filed, including several on individuals who'd been associated with the somewhat infamous case. One for Paul Marcinkus, came back empty, Marcinkus had been an archbishop or archbishop, and served as president of the Vatican Bank from 1971 to 1989. So it can't be 1933. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I have no idea what that date actually says. I wish I could tell you. But anyways, allegedly becoming involved in the Banco Ambrosiano scandal and several associated money laundering and organized crime cases. Three other requests on the case remained pending over, however... One, for Licio Gelli, has returned a partial set of documents, which will be explored elsewhere. Another for Michelle Sindona's FBI file turned up 13,000 pages, which are forthcoming. The third request for Roberto Calvi recently received an initial response from the FBI. An appeal has been filed to receive more than the pre-processed records initially offered. While Marcinicus ran the Vatican Bank, it was Roberto Calvi who became known as God's Banker. Unsurprisingly, the partial file released shows direct overlap with the Banco Ambrosiano, filed due to his serving as the bank's chairman. The FBI's interest in Roberto Calvi seemed to begin in June of 1981 with an airtel from Rome. The airtel labeled La Cosa Nostra left the FBI with the impression that he might be a key to the growing interest in international money laundering. Roberto Calvi, La Cosa Nostra, FBI HQ has reviewed referenced airtel as it pertains to Roberto Calvi. It appears he might be a key to the growing interest in international money laundering. Legat should um, recontact Italian authorities and determine what, if any, current information exists. If information exists, task continental offices appropriately with leads. Uh, okay, the FBI followed up on its interest of Calvi and found out in 1982 that he would be convicted for financial crimes. The memo concluded that the Bureau's Rome office would continue to look for links between Calvi and organized crime. So this is rather interesting. We have the FBI investigating the Vatican back then. And there is a connection to the Vatican, the Masons, and of course, the Mafia. But it keeps going. Let's keep going. Roberto Calvi, um, May 4th, 1982. On May 13, 1982, assistant legal attached blank met with Milan, Italy, investigating magistrates, blank, and officials of the blank, who are knowledgeable concerning ongoing investigation of Roberto Calvi and the Ambr Ambrosiano Bank, which he controls. For information of Bureau, Calvi was tried in Italy for illegal exportation of funds and was convicted and sentenced to four years in prison. He is currently appealing the conviction. The next month, the FBI was advised of something that remains redacted, but left the Bureau with a request to close the investigation. The most likely cause was Calvi's death, which had occurred a month earlier. 
A memo issued soon after uh, went into additional details. According to the memo, Calvi had been found dead in the Thames River. This was arguably true, but misleading. In reality, Calvi had been found hanging from the Blackfriars Bridge above the Thames. Based on this information, the Bureau put forward two theories. He had either been killed or committed suicide. Uh, Roberto Calvi was found dead in the Thames River, London, England, on Friday, June 13, 1982. Calvi had disappeared Friday, June 11, 1982, from his uh, Rome, Italy residence. No final uh, detrimation has been made as to the cause of death. At present, two theories abound, one suicide and the other murder. According to the FBI memo, six days after Roberto Calvi disappeared, one day before his body was found, and on the same day Calvi died, his secretary was killed and she fell out of her window. Speculation is that she committed suicide. The Bureau acknowledged that the coincidental timing seemed strange to the media and had resulted in a great deal of interest, but the Bureau's only apparent interest, however, was looking for connections between Calvi and money laundering for organized crime, and so the memo committed to looking for any mafia or La Cosa Nostra interest. On Thursday, June 17, 1982, Calvi's personal private secretary, Teresa, um, Corocher was killed, I think that's how you say it, when she fell out of her window. How many bankers have we seen lately fall out of their window? Or off a roof? Hmm. Interesting. Speculation is that she committed uh, suicide. Calvi's disappearance and death together with the suicide of his personal private secretary has resulted in a great deal of media interest in view of allegations that Calvi may have been involved in the movement of monies for organized crime. The investigation into his death will be followed with interest for any information linking Calvi or his Embr uh, Ambrosiano bank to LCN or Mafia interest. Oh, La Cosa Nostra. Okay. The next update the Bureau got was probably stranger than anything they'd expected with the phrases like Vatican Bank and secret Masonic Lodge. In a memo written to an unnamed judge, who was almost certainly Judge William Webster, the then director of the FBI, who is often addressed by the honorific judge, the Bureau responds to questions generated by an article in the New York Times, by the way. In doing so, the memo summarizes a story that manages to link the Vatican Bank to elements of organized crime, as well as to a secret Masonic Lodge. It became embroiled in a political and intelligence scandal that effectively created a shadow government in Italy. According to the Times, Banco Ambrosiano had lost up to $1.4 billion, and the Vatican Bank had some potential associated liabilities. This would be one of the tamest parts of the memo. On 8-16-82, passed along the question. You have, uh, Robert, I couldn't read the last word there, I apologize. Roberto Calvi, former president, deceased of the Banco Ambrosiano. Your question was in response to an article appearing in the New York Times, attached, discussing Calvi's death. A possible $1.4 billion uh, loss to Banco Ambrosiano was associated uh, potential liabilities to the Vatican Bank. The memo continued by stating the Bureau had previously been informed that Calvi had been arrested on charges brought by the Italian finance police of illegally transferring funds abroad. According to the memo, Calvi had been a member of the Christian Democratic Party, which had in turn been secretly supported by the CIA, and had been linked by Italian investigators to the Italian P2 scandal. Referring to the latest failure of the Italian government attributed to a secret Masonic Lodge, the Propaganda P2, or P2, uh, Propaganda 2, a.k.a. Propaganda 2, had been linked to a shadow government in Italy. The Siogelli's links to Propaganda 2 will be explored in another article. Our files show that our legat in Rome was advised by the Italian authorities that Roberto Calvi was one of several bankers arrested on 52082 on charges brought by the Italian finance police of illegally transferring funds abroad. Calvi, a member of the Christian Democratic Party, has been linked by Italian investigators to the Italian P2 scandal, referring to the latest failure of the Italian government attributed to a secret Masonic lodge. I would really like to know what the FBI has on these Masonic lodges. And, of course, I don't know. I mean, of course, this is in another country, Italy, but not in the U.S. But it's really got to make you wonder, what does the FBI know about our shadow government? Because we know there is one. 
And we know it's connected to the Masons and skull and bones and things of such. But how much do the intelligence agencies actually know? Better yet, how much are these intelligence agencies involved with it? They're exposing another country's back in the 80s. There's been a lot of time since then and now, and of course we see what the CIA is doing, spying on every single phone they can get their hands on. And of course it's not everybody. Don't, don't, don't misquote me or take that the wrong way. The memo went on to recount uh, Michelle Sindono's conviction on 65 counts of fraud relating to Franklin National Bank, which was also tied to the Vatican banking scandal. Sindono's story will be explored after the file is released. The memo goes on to contradict the FBI's no records response regarding Archbishop Marcinicus, as it describes the Bureau's interest in an interview with him. In the interview, Marcinicus denied any knowledge of fraudulent financial deals and the $950 million counterfeit bond deal. Marcinicus confirmed his relationship with Sindona, which means that the release of the latter's file may reveal more information about Marcinicus in the Bureau's interview with him. The memo concludes by noting that a confidential police report told them something which remains redacted, and that they had been unable to validate the Times report. Subsequent investigations into Italy were carried out, and the findings in Italian have been made public. For the Bureau, however, the interest in secret Masonic lodges in the Vatican Bank was incidental to relatively local organized crime cases. Now, we know what goes on in the shadow of these Masonic lodges. It's disgusting. It's atrocious. It's a wonder how they're still around today. It's so illegal. The murders that are committed. But here, they're investigating another country and a connection to the Vatican Bank. Now, of course, we know there's a connection to the Vatican Bank. Not necessarily with this case, but it's how they're run. It's their, their hierarchy and their system. It's a cult. One of the largest in the world. And it's still going on today. You know, the connections between the Masonic lodges and the Illuminati is rather interesting. Because if you go back all the way to the founding of this country, George Washington knew of the attempt by the Illuminati, or an organization called the Illuminati, and their doctrines trying to sway Americans. That fight was going on back then in 1776, and of course, before that too, and after it, and it's still going on today. As you can see right here in an FBI document, secret Masonic lodges, shadow governments, the Vatican, and the Mafia. Doesn't get much clearer than that. That's all I got for you. God bless and carry on.